Hey guys, um, it's been a while since I've done a video. Uh, I've been really busy in the shop uh, forging in the you know in the blacksmith shop. Um, right now, I'm working on on gouges. Uh, just got done doing hook knives. Just did a huge order. Um, just finished it up today. I did a really huge order. Can't say for who or for what, but. Uh, I will say that there are there are some things coming that for the blacksmith shop that are that are making me pretty happy. Um, I'm pretty excited about it. Hopefully they all work out. But uh, we'll talk about that on a different video um, in the future. But anyways, I wanted to tell you guys that I'm going to be doing some price adjustments on my website, on my website and uh, Etsy store um, on some of my stuff. Um, Everything's going to go up approximately five bucks. I can't help it. Um, I've been working on, on hook knives for, uh, I don't know, last week or so. And this is my, what I call my inch and three eighths spoon knife. And uh, it's basically inch and three eighths from about the bottom of here to here radius wise and then it's got a little it's, it opens up a little bit in there but it, it's got a real funny grind to it it's got a concave um, grind on the outside and kind of a flat grind on the inside and it works real well um, these are going to go up to $70 a piece I, I have to do it I got six hours in this total from Forging the blade to grinding the blade to turning the handle to putting it all together to putting that stain on it. I mean, the whole nine yards from start to finish it takes me six hours, um, approximately. So at at that point, at seventy bucks for six hours, I'm I'm still only making like eleven or twelve bucks an hour on this, and that doesn't include buying the materials. So we we're gonna go up to seventy bucks on these. Um, I just, I'm sorry, you know, I was trying to make them a little cheaper and trying to uh, keep the quality up, but it just isn't possible to make them cheaper and, or to keep the quality up and still make them as best as I can. I mean, every one of these knives gets tested before it ever goes out. I, uh, and I just, you know, it just gets too expensive to, or I can't work for free. We'll put it that way. But anyways, that's what I want to talk about. I also wanted to tell you, oh, the uh, hook knives. I have these in three different sizes. I have this one, which is my medium sized one. I have a smaller one, which is just a one inch um, kind of radius on it. And it's got a shorter handle, only about, you know, this long. And it's more for like throw it in your kit and stuff. But I mean, this one's pretty small too. You can throw it in your kit, but this one's got the advantage of, and I can't turn it upside down because I don't have this glued together yet. But this has the advantage that you can you can turn it this way, um, and you can grab it from the back side, real nice. It's real. The handle's real ergonomical, I guess is the word for it, um, for what it is. But anyways, I have these in three sizes. I have a really huge one too that uh, can actually be used for like bowls and, and bigger things, um, and then. I still sell the Makatogans, and uh, I'm not sure what I'm going to do there for prices, but uh, that's a, they're they're going to go up a little bit too, probably just a little, everything just a little bit. Um, and I, I also sell gouges. These are my hand forged gouges. Uh, they come in three different sizes. Also, this is the the medium size one. Also, it's a one inch. And they're spoon gouges, and they got this handle on them that is a little fatter up here and skinnier down there. And it's fatter up here that way you, when you stick your palm on it and you're pushing, you're not pushing against like a pointy, pointy end of a thing because it doesn't feel so good in your hand. But that big fat end does. And another thing you can also do is you can grip it this way and sort of work towards yourself. So it make, makes it really nice that way. But anyways, this comes... And three different sizes also. Um, this is the medium size, which is one inch across. It comes. I come with. I make a three-quarter inch one, which is a little smaller, 
And then the three quarter one has the same exact handle as this. And then I make a uh, uh, inch and three eighths one, which is inch and three eighths across. And it comes with a handle that's quite a bit longer because it was designed specifically for doing like bowls and plates and bigger concavities. So, uh, and these are all green woodworking tools, by the way. Um, but anyway, so I just wanted to, uh, give you guys a heads up that things are going to go up a little bit on the website and we got some big stuff coming from the, for the blacksmithing shop as far as, uh, I'm, I'm can't really say, but I'm pretty happy about it. Uh, this big order that I'm finishing up today is specifically for somebody that uh, is hopefully going to end up being one of my good buddies and, and business partners. But anyway, so yeah, I'm pretty happy. Uh, oh, some garage sale finds too. Uh, went to a flea market. I got We got a local flea market around here. It sells a little bit of everything on Fridays. And uh, actually last Friday I went just because I needed grinding belts for the belt grinders. And there's a lady down there that sells an array of them. And a couple other things. And I ended up for the blacksmith shop. So I ended up picking up all that stuff. And then, of course, all my tools I make from old files. But they have to be American-made files from, like, you know, the old days. So flea markets are the best place to find those. So I'm always hunting them up. So I ended up coming home with quite a bit of them actually so I did that but anyways I there was a guy there this is an outdoor flea market and an indoor flea market but this guy was outside and it was like 20 25 degrees out it was really chilly that day and he had all kinds of stuff out there and he was like I was like well what do you want for this and he's like a dollar what do you want for that a dollar what do you want for that oh two bucks so I ended up buying uh, not much because I didn't have a whole lot of money on me at the time. I mostly had money for the blacksmithing stuff So I ended up buying um, A few things the guy had a set of brand new grinding wheels that looked like they were taken off of a grinder and Just you know put away so I bought them. They were a buck so you know always use grinding wheels and um, The two cool things I found though was this This was in it's a no-name one, but this was in one of his bins. It was just a box, basically. And I picked it up out of there, and I was like, well, well how much is this? And he's like, a buck. So I picked up a uh, raker gauge for $1. You know, I mean, I mean, if you're not into the cross-cut saws and, the, and stuff like that, you probably wouldn't know what this is. But... Uh, I have several of these because I use them because I, I'm into the green woodworking, so I sharpen my own saws and stuff. And uh, it's a pretty cool uh, little tool, anyways, to be to be honest with you. So, anyways, but it's a no-name one and it's a buck. And usually they go for name brand ones go for like I don't know, it depends on on the brand, but you know you can get pick them up for as cheap as twenty bucks and as expensive as a couple hundred probably. Um, but uh, for a dollar, I wasn't getting gonna pass this up at all and then the other thing I got which was really uh, not something that I really would use very much but it was just such a cool item and you see these all the time on like eBay and stuff for like 10 12 bucks and they're always made in China now this one I was looking at it was made in Japan and I'm thinking it's older so probably still a decent steel but it, it, it came in this, it was in this old cardboard thing, and it says Pioneer, I don't want to hold it upside down, it's upside down right now, it says Pioneer on it, if I hold it the other way, everything's going to fall out, I think, I don't know, but anyways, maybe I'll tilt the camera. Oh, maybe it won't. Oh, it would if I turned the right one. Still getting used to this new camera mount for my iPad tablet. But anyways, it says Pioneer on it. I don't know if you guys are reading it backwards or not. But, but uh, and what it is, is it's an old-fashioned, not really old-fashioned, but older 
I don't even know what the date would be. Probably, I'm guessing 60s or 70s. Carving kit. And they're all there. Every single one of them is there. And they don't look like they've been used very much. But I thought, you know, why not? And I asked the guy what he wanted for it, and he told me a dollar. So I picked it up for a buck. Um, the, one of the main reasons I picked it up was on my Makatagan handles that I make for you guys and sell. I do a little bit of intricate carving on them. Not a lot, just a little bit, just to make them look nice and uh, more traditional and stuff like that. And I always find it hard to get into those small places sometimes. And I thought, well, you know, for a dollar, maybe that'll help. So I did pick that up. So I, not a big garage sale find week. Um, more of a, hey, I this is... Uh, more news channel type of stuff, channel news. Um, I, uh, yeah, that's a, that's about all I got to say. I just wanted to let you guys know that I'm still still making videos. I'm just been very very busy in the shop lately. Um, I still got to edit the rest of the buck buck skinning videos for you guys that are watching the the, the buck skinning series. Um, then I think I got one more video left for the meat grinder. Um, series too, which is done. I'm already using it, by the way. Um, but anyway, I mean, it works good. But uh, yeah, uh, I did buy another belt grinder too. Um, same flea market, got it cheap. Uh, it was missing a couple of wheels. It, it was like my uh, like my belly bell bell saws grinder. Only it was made by me, but they're they must have been made by the same company because they're exact same grinders. And I paid. Like I said, ten bucks for for the chassis on it. It didn't come with any stand or anything, but uh, hey, for ten bucks, and I have extra wheels here, so I got another belt grinder that I'm gonna get set up for, uh, you know, just whatever. But uh, yeah, kind of fighting the cold too, so that kind of sucks. But anyways, yeah, just wanted to give you guys a heads up video. Um, I'm going to start doing some carving videos because um, this new, this is a, another carving knife, but this one I put together for myself. Um, sometimes I turn a handle and it doesn't look good enough to sell to the public, so I end up, uh, you know, using it for myself. There's nothing wrong with this handle. It has a couple little holes in it here. Um, every once in a while, I will say this, though. You'll get a handle for me. And it will have some minor bug holes or, or a, not, a small knot or something like that in it. And I let it go because it, it doesn't hurt the handle at all. It gives it a little bit of character. And, you know, it's just it's just a little thing that I do. I mean, I like those handles that have that little extra bit of stuff going on with them. And these handles are so, they're always hardwood. And you know, they're going to hold up. They're going to last. I have no no problem with that at all but uh anyways just to let you guys know that every, every once in a while you will get a handle that has a small bug hole or something in it and uh it's just something i do because um it just doesn't hurt it and it gives it some character i kind of like that kind of stuff um anyways so yeah i just wanted to say thank you like share subscribe um i'm going to start making some more videos it's been really cold here in ohio uh, we had a little uh, warm up there a couple days ago, but I mean, temperatures has been, I mean, just phenomenally cold at, at times. Um, we had a warm up, now we're going back down to a cold thing. So, you know, you can only do what you can do. Uh, there for a while, we had eight, nine inches of snow on the ground the whole time, and it was getting down into the like, you know, 9 10 11 degrees and at night it was going down into the minus this and minus that and uh it's hard to get out and do anything especially with me because i got a little boy so even if i do get out or do go on to go out and make a video in the garage i can't because i got him and, and that's fine but you know and i sure as heck can't bring him out to the garage with me because i have no heat out here i have a small jet heater in here and i just got done plasticking in my little work area because I've been so busy out here that you know this year I actually have to work a lot of hours in here so 
it is what it is. So, anyways, like I said, thank you for uh, watching, like, share, subscribe. Just wanted to show you those couple little garage sale things or flea market things and give you an update on some of my hand forged tools. They're, they're going to go up just a little bit. I'm sorry. Got to do it. Um, so if you're going to buy one, buy one now because it's probably going to, price change is probably going to be in another week or so. Uh, but like I said, it's not going to be much. It's maybe five bucks or so per tool, something like that. <laughs> um, just to, just to help a little bit because the, I'm, I'm not, I'm making money, but I'm not making a lot of money at this for the hours that I put in. I'm really not making that much and I need to. And I mean, I don't know. I've looked on other websites and, you know, a lot of guys sell a nice carving knife that, but they only sell the blade or, or, or whatever. And for this, you're getting a very nice carving knife, hardwood handle, you know, all the bells, all the whistles, and, uh, the grind on it is just phenomenal. You'll, you'll just love it. I mean, you can't, I don't know if you can see that or not, but there's just a little bit of a concave there where, where it's, and, and I have to do, a, I'm going to have to do a sharpening video for these too, because a lot of people ask me, well, how do you sharpen this? And this material is file material and I harden it and then I temper it. And Usually after I get done tempering, it still stays relatively very hard. I'm not going to say it's so hard that if you dropped it, it would break, but it's close. I mean, it, it's tempered good to where it flexes a little bit. But if you took it like this and went like that and hit, it hit the cement like that, I'm not saying it wouldn't, it wouldn't snap in half just because you're putting so much force on the, on the tip of this thing. It was never meant for that. But... When it goes to sharpening these nine times out of ten, if you haven't, if you if you just strop it, like stri what I do is I strop this ang angle here with a strop, and then I come in to the inside angle and I strop it a couple of times. If you keep it stropped before and after you use it um, every time, you probably will never ever have to sharpen this thing. And if you do have to sharpen it, the only thing I sharpen mine with is I have a small piece of emery cloth wrapped around, let's see if I can get it out of there, wrapped around a little wooden thing. And when I do the concave, I use the edge and I just run it right down through there. And when I use the outside, I use the flat and I just go right around the outside with it. And that's all I do. And I, basically you just sharpen both sides. And that is like, it's a really fine, wet, dry sandpaper. Um, this is actually 320. You can go as high as you want. Um, 320 is about, as high, that's a worn out 320. So, you know, it's probably finer than 320. But uh, that's as high as I go with mine. And then I buff mine on the buffer. But uh, as far as the sharpening. Um, another thing about these knives is that um, on the very, very edge, there's a micro bevel. And I mean, like, just the slightest little bevel. And usually, like, I will sharpen them right around here like this. And then I'll take the same thing and on the micro bevel part. I'll just go around it, like, just, like, two, maybe three times. Just at a different angle. And uh, what that does is it, it strengthens that edge quite a bit. And it's such a minute bevel that by looking at it, you can't even see it. But it does so much for strengthening the edge of that. And, you know, they're sharp. I mean, my tools, well, I don't even have a piece of wood here. But, yeah, I don't have it, even have nothing here. But anyways, but I'll, I'll do a uh, sharpening video and sh stuff. But these, they're guaranteed razor sharp when they get come to you. You'll be very happy with them. But anyways, okay, um, let me let you go for the third time. And I want to say thank you, like, share, subscribe, and uh, we'll get back to you with another video.